We see the sky, we see the land, we see the water, and we wonder, are we the only ones? Long before we came to exist, the humans ruled the earth. They made marvelous things and moved whole mountains. They knew the secret of flight, the secret of happiness, and other secrets beyond our imagining. The humans also knew the secret of life, and they used it to give us the four great gifts. Thinking minds, feeling hearts, speaking mouths, and reaching hands. We are their children. They taught us how to use our hands and how to speak. They showed us the joy of using our minds. They loved us. And when we were ready, they surely would have given us the secret of happiness. And now we see the sky, the land, and the water that we are heirs to. And we wonder, why did they leave? Do they live still in the stars, in the ocean depths, in the wind? We wonder, was their fate good or evil? And will we also share the same fate one day? Wow. The reboot to Mondo TV's lore didn't need to go this hard. Headshot Ken. How sad. Welcome, one and all, to a very unusual classic that has some uh, small niche community, possibly. Navar, I <laughs> hope you appreciate the effort that it took me not to make a uh, Avatar The Last Airbender joke right at the beginning of that <laughs> introduction. Oh, I, Because I, it I... would have been so easy, but I am... If nothing else, a man of integrity. Of course. And, <laughs> and whatever it is I just said. Oh, we got something going on. Also, we're just getting into this. We don't have a menu screen or nope. anything of the sort. I won! I won! I knew I could defeat you! What? Why? How did you... While your pawn was still searching in the Cave of Tears, my paladin made it through the forest to hold Surprise. Well, consider it's a chessboard. I don't think that's how you play the game. Hmm. Hey, how dare you? I'm a fox. <laughs> I am foxy. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, look, it's Nicodemus. He's not dead. <laughs> Hey Nicodemus, what's the secret of Neem? I never learned what the secret of Neem was. I'm so mad, I am going to eat my competition. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be surprised. Yay, single-handedly. Single-handedly redeeming the negative cultural perception of his people with this victory on D&D Chess Edition. <laughs> oh, Riff. 
Oh, oh love really? interest. <laughs> I sure love losers. And you are the sexiest. <laughs> it's not first place. I should have won first place. Riff has a bit of um rib and pex situation going yeah. for him, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> <gasps> what is the meaning of this? The yeah! Storms has been stolen from its resting place. Orb of storms. Not the Orb of Storms! Is most distressing. Wait, Until is it better or worse than the Orb of Lightning? <laughs> confined? Boars cannot be confined! Boars are meant to leave free! Including perhaps stealing the orb of storms? Boars do not steal! Why would the bar? Yeah. The Does this game have fantasy storms racism? Rain brings mud. A bit, I think. <laughs> oh, goody. Can't we all just get along? We would have just walked in boldly and taken it. No elk, we are not thieves. I sure love the sad uh, tuba soundtrack for the boars. <laughs> it sounds as if every step they're taking, they are producing air, if yeah. you catch my meaning. Ah, uh, stereotypes. I was preparing to lose this match fair and square. And I suppose someone saw you and can confirm this? Yes, my I was with love interest, whom is also a fox. First one fox lies, then the other fox does, by saying the first one was telling the truth. We boars want the orb returned. As much as I hate to admit, there is truth in what the elk can I like how he's positioned himself, like, in the same way, uh, they would interact with the audience, essentially. I am not on your side, stop looking at me. <laughs> What, animals? Can you imagine if this is an elaborate Animorphs spin-off? <laughs> Very well, Captain. I'll deal with this. Under the authority granted me by the Forest King, I arrested Bambi's dad? Of... But you can't do that. No, Bambi himself. We haven't stolen anything. This is the future, remember? Ah, yes. <laughs> they survived the arrival of man in the forest, and now man is dead, so the animals have inherited the earth. See this medallion? This is for second place in the puzzle solving contest. Anyone can find the orb of storms and bring it back to you. It's me. But what the rat do one? Can we can we call the rat? He seems to know what he was doing. I know. <laughs> Can the rat be the main character? Yeah, no, no. Okay, the fox has to prove he's not a liar and have an arc. Okay, if you insist. <laughs> Lieutenant Ia, please step forward. Lieutenant Ia, you will accompany them on their quest. Aid them where. Hi, first party member. Okay, so we are forming the three animal stooges, I suppose. Are to use whatever force is necessary to return them to us to stand trial. Is that perfectly clear, Lieutenant? Yes, my Captain. Wait! Boars do not trust foxes! Boars do not trust elk! You don't trust anyone, apparently! Boars do not trust boars! <laughs> boars do not trust warriors! Ark! go with them! Find this orb! If they are lying, kill them! If they try to escape, kill them! If you suspect treachery, Kill them if they do not find the orb. If they do not give ice cream, kill them. <laughs> what about if we snore too loudly? Then kill them. <laughs> Boris, don't trust this guy. Mm, mm. Boris, don't trust this guy. Oh, don't trust this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do not trust you most of all, young fox. That's your theme, isn't it? To make sure you come back. Oh, you mean to tell me different cultures and races learning to exist, coming together in order to inherit the earth? 
Oh, gee, you mean to tell me this is the whole light motif of this game? I would have not been able to guess. What, we're not gonna get him done for murder if he does that? <laughs> Green. Concentrate on completing your task. Remember, I cannot stop looking at the Fox Boy's abs. Yes. I think that's his shirt, actually, that I think about it. I hope that you do. It makes him look ripped to shreds. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this game was developed by very horny people, wasn't it? <laughs> We'll get into that in the moment. I happen to know, I happen to know about the Amazonian wolf. Why do you think that I contacted you on the Discord and told you, hey, we should play in Earth, the Earth out of the blue? Why do you think that was the case? Because of sexy wolf girl, got it? <laughs> well, okay, so proper we welcomes are. one and all to Inherit the Earth, a game that was made back, well, was made and released back in the 90s. Uh, it was 1994 to be exact. Yep, it was released in 1994, and it was, uh, let's just say, it had a pretty rocky development when it came to mm, the way they wanted to do things with this game. I'm sure you will provide some insightful anecdotes on the matter. I definitely will do. So, Inherit the Earth is basically your point-and-click puzzle game. You know, so you have walk, look, pick up, talk, and all that. But this game basically has a few things that are, that's unique to this one, and that is your two companions here. Yes, in, yeah. I noticed you have a couple of uh, very willing party members with you. And I have to imagine that you will learn to get along together. As the game progresses. Pretty much what is the story. It would here. be weird if a game titled Inherit the Earth ends with all the races hating themselves so much that they blow up the Earth and <laughs> nobody gets to inherit it. I would say that's that would uh, that would count as a bit of a false advertisement. Speaking of inheriting the Earth, there is one thing I will bring up though. After this game was made, they uh, tried to... Uh, Set up for a sequel, which was never meant to be. I'm aware, sadly. They sadly tried twice afterwards to make said sequels be a reality, but they were never able to reach their goals on Kickstarter, nor could they get the funds by any other means. So, Inherit the Earth actually, funny enough, still is around to this day in the form of a webcomic which is still active as we speak. I didn't know that. I have something new to read then. Oh, you have a lot of reading material because Inherit the Earth's uh, webcomic series has been around since 2005. The bar? Yes. Don't you worry about me. There have been, over the course of the decades, enough examples of a very specific anthropomorphic subgenre of fiction, wherein anthropomorphic animals do get to inherit the Earth, <laughs> trademark, after the collapse of human civilization. And there are plenty of stories that have this exact same premise, and they usually come with a anti-war and also environmentally friendly message baked into their DNAs. The most recent so one that most of you probably will have know about will probably be Owl's Guard, which recently got released. Beyond the Edge of Owl's Guard, which in many ways I would say is a sort of a spiritual successor to this one, although if I am being perfectly honest, it's more the embodiment of the year 1993 than 1994, in my opinion. Although yeah. 1994 is basically an extended 1993, and unless I expand on that, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's <laughs> an argument for another time. What I'm trying to get towards with my tangent is that there are plenty of examples of this specific setting and subgenre such as all of the Archie Sonic comics. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I do believe that the proper originator of this subgenre was the 1939's MGM animated short Peace on Earth, directed by Hugh Harmon, which was about animals and various critters inheriting the Earth after all the humans have died out because of war. They found the good book, which is the Bible, and created a society based on the teachings of the Bible. And that story in itself, which was also a Christmas special, by the way, clearly was based off the classic format of cautionary fairy tales starring anthropomorphic animals, which have been in vogue for a very, very, very long time. I do not need to reference the Aesop fables now, do I? No. I probably <laughs> don't. There are so many cautionary tales in which we have animals, or rather anthropomorphized animals, that serve the purpose of embodying flaws and qualities of humanity. Yeah. And that is exactly what happens in this game as well. It is a natural progression of that anthropomorphic fiction formula brought to the most extreme logical conclusion wherein the metaphorical notion of animals being used as vehicles to discuss broader issues with humanity as being led to the most literal possible outcome, the animals effectively becoming the new humanity, what I now like to call the post-apocalyptic anthropomorphic fiction. It doesn't have, as far as I know, a proper nomenclature or a name or a shorthand catch-all term, the subgenre that is, so I am giving it one. I am calling it the post-apocalyptic anthropomorphic fiction, or PATH, for short. It's... That helps. <laughs> so to put it more bluntly, Inherit the Earth is an essential piece of furry fiction. Look at that fox. <laughs> Look at his specs. <laughs> when he puts his paws on his flanks, he looks like he's puffing his chest. <laughs> and when you look at all these animals from the side of the profile, they do be packing in the upper torso department. Yeah. All right, Davar, so you've played this game before, have you? Uh, I've watched some I've watched someone let's play it many years ago, but I So, so do you know what we need to be doing right now? Well, there's a couple, well, there's a few things we need to look at first, so let's actually have a look around to get the, to our bearings. Just an ordinary bale of hay. Or a bale of hay. I'll get a rematch, then they'll see. I don't yes, think so. Yes, they'll see. They'll all see. I will win, yes, and this then the I'll show like them by winning. Scene of humility and defeat. Can we take the game, boy? Can you die in this game? Nah, this is not one of those sort of games. I don't think the publisher would let them. I see you admire my noble bearing. Okay, so I'm getting... Speaking of bearings, I'm getting the general bearing of these three personalities. Yeah. You are the regal and snooty one, the quick to anger guy, and the idiot. Which is the protagonist. Of course. I have my orders to help you. Lead on as you wish. I'll be watching everything you do. Yeah, I'll be watching everything you do. Every step you take, every breath you make, I'll be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I like his animation where, you know, he looks like he's pointing his finger at you like uh, like just <laughs> like adults basically point at children like, "Oh, you better behave yourself." <laughs> I am the boar, you see, but I am no boar. <laughs> I'm making the boar jokes. <laughs> Oh, I oh, he's am. The, he's the nicer one of the of the lot of us. I am an elk, which means I am hot. Look at my horns. My horns my, are amazing. My Give antlers, them a lick. <laughs> my my antlers are noble and do uh, have great bearing. Also, Look I like how my... all these people are here just staring at us for the last twenty minutes. <laughs> right. Yes. I have to apologize 
Yeah. Because my rants usually do take that long. Yeah. Let's see if we can go outside. Okay. Now, certain screens will look like this, where basically they go for this kind of like... Isometric. Yeah, isometric view, which was very I think, unusual for the time. I think this is trying to imply it's the overworld. Are we stalking this Ram guy? <laughs> Uh, Foxy. <laughs> wow, he went somewhere. Where did he go? Oh, let's so, talk to him. is this Foxman by, by the way? I wouldn't know that part. In my head, he is. Would you mind I'm sure he's don't into a lot of people. <laughs> you don't admire a man's handsomeness so earnestly. <laughs> Without being interested in some shape or form. Of course. Actually, actually, can you confirm that, Mr. Mancake? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where were you last night? Uh, uh, would you tell me what <laughs> I was doing at the time of the theft? Of course, I was butting heads with one of the other fair goers. Literally or metaphorically? I didn't say I was arguing with him. I said we were butting heads. Ah, literally. <laughs> Ah, ram jokes. Okay, get it over with all the animal jokes. I think it was the rats. No, no. On second thought, I think it was the bears. However, it could have been the dogs. My vote, however, is with one of those crafty foxes. Oh, oh. the fingers seem to be pointing to them and to one in particular. And I have seen no evidence to the contrary. Have you? Uh, you're talking to him. <laughs> Any idea why someone might have wanted to steal the orb? Hmm. Something that predicts the weather, tells us the seasons, something upon which our entire agricultural existence depends. I can't possibly imagine why anyone would want to steal that old thing. Perhaps <laughs> to make into a necklace? What do you think? I think you need to take a sit and calm down, sir. I think I think the sarcasm was off the charts from this man. What do you know about these orbs? Only two things. One, they are round. Hence, the name orb. Two, the theft of one... Orbs are round?! <laughs> I'm writing this down. <laughs> Write it down. I know about them, and that is all I want to know about them. Are you taking copious amounts of notes? <laughs> <laughs> what would you get when search for the orb? ...and looking for the missing orb? Yes, I can. I suggest you take the longest, most difficult route available. Don't forget to stop occasionally and bang your head with a large rock or other blunt instrument. Bury your face in a hill of red ants whenever you can. And if you should run across any rams that might be on holiday, don't forget to take time out and totally ruin it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm still at the part about the ants. Uh, what comes next? He's <laughs> writing everything down in his little diary. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, thank you for... Farewell, young fox. If we never meet again, it will be too soon. This guy's, like, got a hate bonus, it seems. Wow, what a sore head. Hey, a well, Riff does have a different kind of boner after that conversation. Because that's totally his kink, you see. <laughs> he thinks her personality is as prickly as her skin. Oh, so we have a Pokemon? Excuse me, my good woman, but could I trouble you long enough to ask you a few questions? Oh, very well. Ask your questions, but make them brief. Oh god, we're gonna ask everybody about this. <laughs> Do we have to? I actually don't remember oh, this part. Look! Look at the scowl on her face! Yeah, this My picture gosh! Here. I love the contrast between the smiley reef and whomever it is he's talking to. I'm having such a good day interrogating people. Mmm, I don't trust this fox! <laughs> I don't trust this fox! Mm, I don't trust this fox! <laughs> I don't trust this fox! Where were you last night, just after dusk? Where I was and what I was doing is none of your business. This is a very familiar voice. Hmm. Do you have any suspicions as to who may have stolen the Orb of Storms? There are plenty around here who would be mean enough to... June Foray? Is that you? 
That would, can't be. I would have to look her up, honestly. That sounds like June Foray, or a reasonable imitation thereof. Can you suggest why someone might have stolen the orb? Because people are mean. They're just plain mean. The that seems very nice, simple. Well, you know well, the information about the stolen orb. Now, do I look like the type of person who would have? Yes, I'll die. <laughs> Seems that people have placed so much importance on these orbs, they've forgotten how to do anything for themselves. Know what I mean? No, please no. explain in painful and over protracted detail. Could you offer me any advice on my search? The only advice I have. Not to take any advice from anybody. They so, okay, serious. he's going to write it down. Take no advice from anybody. Yes, ma'am. Well, must be off. Huh? Well, I must be off. Thank you so much for your time and wisdom, my good woman. It has truly been a pleasure talking to you. Well, uh, thank you, young man. It was nice to talk to you, too. Such a polite young man. Oh, she's smiling now! The picture on the Aww. right! She's not scowling anymore. That's a nice little detail. Very yeah. nice. Okay, so far this game has pretty much my sense of humor when it comes to classic point-and-click adventure games. It's very charming, I would say that much. Can we admire the fox's strut? The manly, manly strut? Da, 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 look at me strutting. Look at that manly strut. Look at that booty. <laughs> Swiggity swoggity. Like what you see, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Friend Mole, I was wondering if I can exchange your currency, what would be your pleasure? Ask about the orb. We are seeking information. We are seeking information about the orb with which we must ponder. Are we going to steal from him? I would hope. I don't know. Now leave me alone. Any large amounts of money changed hands recently? Noticed any large amounts of money changing hands of late? No, and if I had, I wouldn't tell you. The only hands I care about are mine. And since there is no look at these tiny little hands, uh. they are so creepy. Aren't they great? <laughs> he pushes his hands on his snout. Yeah, <laughs> admire them. Look at them, kiss we them. Have very little money. Can you help us? That depends on what you have a value. Those abs are great, but they hold no value, <laughs> financially speaking. Silver, I'll give you 20 credits for it. My medallion is not for sale. 20 credits is the best I can do. Take it or leave it. You don't understand. A friend once told me that I should be proud of this medallion. Who said that? Oh, wait. For her that I wear it. She did say it, didn't Very you? Very well, my sentimental young friend. Tell us what Accuse you him of stealing the orb. I told you, I know nothing. Now be gone. I see I will Can you actually agree to sell the medal? I think so. Of all the people at this fair, you are the one who would have the most to gain by the theft of the orb. Why? Because he's a banker? <laughs> a thing of such value would surely bring a good price. And the money changer would be the first to whom the thief would go to ransom the prize. Tell us what you know or we will turn you over to the authorities. You can do nothing. You have no evidence. You have no proof. All you have are wild accusations. That's exactly what a not guilty person would say. Can you make moral choices in this game? Now I wonder. We should sell the medal, so let's do it. Oh. Oh, okay. Sentimental value? Who cares about that? Money. <laughs> 15 credits. You said you would give me 20 when I asked before. That was before. 
It has gone from a seller's market to a buyer's market. <laughs> Fifteen is my final offer. Take it or leave it. Why, you? Keep him away from me, or you shall get nothing. Patience, friend Doc. We cannot harm him. This is no more than highway robbery. I was wondering when the NPCs were going to do anything. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Might as well accept the bargain. It is a poor bargain at best, but one I am forced to accept. Can you stop looking at me, Foxy Boy? We have no more time for arguments, friend Doc. We must do what we must do. <laughs> there you are, young fox. Count it if you wish. Right, so we have you money. Again, won't you? I look forward to our next transaction. And I do not. So Thank you. Goodbye. I have some have a good day. So I have some reservations about this character. Some doubts. Is there a long running stereotype about moles being greedy? I don't think so. Usually they're more you know, stereotyped as being blind or nearsighted. There is an unfortunate uh, stereotype that uh, involves uh, Jewish people and giving the mole's general posture and appearance and the long snout. Even if this was unintentional, which is most likely the case, there is no denying that certain stereotypes have endured the test of time in ways that you might not even think about. And they are so deeply ingrained in our minds and culture that we might not even notice them. At the same time, I might just be making mountains out of anthills. And mm. it would not be the first time I do so. I don't want to be that guy. Anyway, we're having a good time. We are enjoying a furry antro fantasy adventure starring the Three Stooges. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> If only there was a moment like that. Are you guys... What are you guys doing? Playing hide and seek in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, damn trees! The <laughs> I trees cannot are, see where I'm going! The trees are our greatest enemies yet. <laughs> a fortune teller. Oh, okay. Speaking of problematic uh, stereotypes, the ever-enduring uh, trope of the Romani woman being a fortune teller that is never going to go away, is it? And the accent too. Why? Why does this feline person from the future of post-apocalyptic post-humanity is dressed like a stereotypical Romani fortune teller with the accent and everything? Explain this to me. Easy. No one can explain it. Explain this to me. This is... This isn't just the problematic, it's silly. <laughs> it's also very silly. Oh, it's a game from the 90s. Yeah. Two struck did had a better version of the fortune teller. <laughs> right, I say this is a game from the 90s, but then I see this exact style of character also in an Animal Crossing game from 2020. <laughs> I suppose you were in your booth last evening telling fortunes? Now who is telling fortunes? I was here, Kitling, all evening. Indeed, I would buy a stolen. Perhaps you could look into your crystal and tell me who did this deed. Wait a minute, this crystal is orb shaped! Ha! Gotcha! Arrest her! <laughs> Case solved! Game over! <laughs> Hold on, wait, I just noticed she does not have an actual sphere. No. Yes. Oh no, she's got new age scam artist crystals. Yep. I hope they're not goop crystals. Oh my god, I cannot believe you said that to me right now. <laughs> I cannot believe we're having this moment. I can. Did you know that Gwyneth Palfro was selling a perfume that smelled like her own vagina? Yep. And now, you can never unhear this. I wish You're welcome, we, I America. Wish, <laughs> I, wish we, I wish we could unhear it. 
I'm going to keep all of this in and be cancelled on social media. Finally, about time. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, that's for sure. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay, why would you... Okay, so hold on a minute. I suggest you examine the scene of the crime. You may find... Hey, would you like to take over the investigation? You seem to be... You seem to know what you're doing. Yes. Yes. There you will find the old one. Ilara. Ilara? She is so old, she's almost 37. <laughs> that makes too much sense in Animal World logic. I am turning into dust as we speak. Thank you for your help and counsel. Will you not tarry a while longer? Perhaps a soft bed will rest and refresh you for your journey. I'm married. Until she is free, there will be no rest for me. Stop looking at me! <laughs> this might be my autism speaking, but him constantly looking at us as he speaks is getting on my nerves. It's one of those niggling little things that once you notice them, they are never going away. They are there and they annoy you. <laughs> Perhaps she can provide me with some answers. Also, I gotta like how she... Uh... She kind of nonchalantly, you know, kind of offered herself to us, but in a very coded way. Yes, in a very Legend of Zelda 2 Link's Adventure way. Originally, this game was going to be a lot more adult in its themes and... Uh, you don't say. ...and such, but the publisher basically came in and said, these are anthropomorphic animals. That means it's for children. Ah, uh, yes, because there has never been adult fiction starring anthropomorphic animals. Ever. Definitely that never happened. Fritz the cat? What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> because of that stupidity, the developers were forced to toned down a lot of the stuff they already did or had planned, right down to removing character deaths or having deaths off screen. Because all of those old cautionary tales starring anthropomorphized animals definitely never had anybody dying, drowning, or being eaten. Yeah. None <laughs> of that. No one had any of that. Okay, we're talking to a suspicious looking rat. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't say it like that, that sounds racist. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have successfully established that everybody is casually racist in this world. Ah, the Avenue Q way of looking at because things. Because, you see, I <laughs> mean, a little the bit racist. <laughs> clearly, the moral of the story is that we must all learn to get along, otherwise we cannot inherit the Earth. <laughs> Would you be so kind as to tell me where you were Hello, Otter. <laughs> oh, I thought you said, hello, Althor. Where? Where's the Althor of this game? <laughs> I want to shake their hand and slap them at the same time. <laughs> a bookseller, you say? Can you think of anyone who would want to steal the Orb of Storms? The Orb is very valuable to many races. It could have been anyone here. It could have been no one here. That's oddly vague. Very vague. It has great value. It could be used by many races. How would you use it? I am a merchant. If I had such an orb, I would sell it to the highest bidder. Then I could retire and live the rest of my days in luxury. And then I would lose all my money betting on the wrong guy during a <laughs> game of D&D chess. <laughs> <laughs> How they were made, nor how they came to contain their powers. An element about this premise that I find interesting is that yeah. this goes against the usual grain when it comes to the post-apocalyptic anthropomorphic fiction, in that 
humans all died out because of the many mistakes they made, war, nuclear holocaust, famine, hatred. They all died because they never learned to get along, blah, 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 the usual fare. And then animals come along and they learn not to make the same mistakes and become the ideal version of humanity. Yeah. You know, furries and gays. Yeah. <laughs> the ideal version of humanity, as we all know. But this seems to go for the opposite route, in that humanity was perceived as this enlightened race of gods, and I'm sure the story is going to do something about that in a minute or two. <laughs> and animals are the flawed ones that are tasked to live up to expectations, to earn the right to rule in the Garden of Eden, so to speak. Yeah. So humanity here is a piece of history and lore, and it is perceived as a divine religious entity. Yeah. Which is not dissimilar from Nier Automata, and saying that out loud made me very sad, come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Right in front of them! You know, the very handsome elk is right behind you, hidden, partially hidden by the tree. Hey, by the way, speaking of not trusting these guys, can we talk to them? Let's try again, see if they will talk. This was one of the best fairs we've ever had. Well, for most of us anyway. Excuse me, my good lady, but oh my god! And I are in search of the orb of storms. Get this super lesbian animal RPG character out of here! I was in my wagon preparing my sculptures for today's sale. They are quite beautiful, are they not? No, tell me that doesn't look exactly like somebody's persona. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> I love her. That's like inserting a sparkle dog into Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Can you tell me who might have stolen the orb? Someone very clever. I understand the orbs are heavily guarded. In order for someone to steal one, he would have to be there. This ram has uh, hind legs for days. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming by and let us admire your hind legs. Goodbye. <laughs> Why is she moving like as if she's Stan from uh, Monkey Island? I cannot help you find the orb, but once you do, I suggest you learn all you can about it. Then bring your knowledge to me, and I'll see if I can make another. Together, we could become very rich. Thank you for your time. Lady, you've got a deal. This is now a real estate scam. <laughs> I don't know why I said real estate scam, but uh, we can always fit a real estate scam into this fantasy adventure. Now, where is that otter? I keep seeing him pass by every so often. I want to pet the otter. I want to touch the otter in inappropriate places. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, forget you heard that. I mean, I didn't say that. It, it, you definitely misheard. Don't, don't go back and check it. Do not, do not pause the video. Do not pull up the scroll feature. Do not go back ten seconds and listen to that. <laughs> yeah, don't clip it. Especially not that. <laughs> Jeez. I, I mean, I could cut oh, it out, but it um, probably not. No, 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 come back. I no, wait, come here! Come, get back here! Could we ask you some questions? Time no. Is money, my friend. If you want one, it will cost you the other. But we have very little money, and we it will cost you the other. Hey. Sorry, friend. Like I said, no time, no time. Bye now. Hey, I thought the mall was the greedy one. Body has some value to you. Yes, it, it certainly does. Ark is very uh, helpful. <laughs> our transaction is complete. So far, he's been the only useful character. <laughs> yeah, he has not done much yet. Then, yes, I mean, he is the full throttle to our Monkey Island. <laughs> uh, puzzle solving with violence. 
<laughs> Do you know of anyone who might have stolen the orb? Are you joking? Who stolen the orb? Who might have stolen it? The orb! Where is it? <laughs> and that's the truth. You seem to associate with a fairly unsavory life. Have you heard any rumors among your companions? Not a thing. Most of the people I know are into petty theft. Nothing as big as an orb. You know, petty theft, that's a hobby. Uh, on the yes. weekends. <laughs> of course, the otters like trinkets. Uh, and ferrets. Uh, so, of are course... you Are you sure you're not confusing them with magpies? That them too. <laughs> the only reason why these animals have such stereotypes attached to them is because we, humans, have attached our flaws projected our flaws onto them again thanks to literal centuries of fairy tales and anthropomorphic fiction but the orb is quite valuable. when you look at this world from within as in in universe it seems pretty silly that these animals would organically develop such specific stereotypes that were given to them by humanity Unless, of course, humanity, in universe, in the context, in the fictional context of this universe, actually did assign them with stereotypes <laughs> at birth, like gender. What do you know about the orb? No more than anyone else. It's the orb that predicts the weather and tells when to plant the crops. It's been around since the time of man. That's all I know. Honest. Do you have any advice for us on our search? This thing is big. It's much too big a job for one person. You mean one person could not have stolen it? One person might have stolen it, but it would take a whole syndicate to either use it or get rid of it. Whoever made off with it is bound to have some really powerful contacts. Hmm. You said syndicate. Yep. That's an interesting word you used. You should. Most yes, I will be very displeased. <laughs> you most certainly do. <laughs> of anything, you'll be the first to know. See that we boars do not trust others. <laughs> boars don't trust other boars. <laughs> boars do not trust the four sonas and sparkle dogs. Right. Boars do not trust real estate. <laughs> <laughs> but that, my god, all these houses look the same. I'm pretty sure they must have reused some assets. Oh, I'm assuming the budget wasn't particularly high. I believe it was not that high, yeah. Ah, we found the map. I am inviting a Simon the Sorcerer comparison with this game because when I look at the character models, yeah. The way they are drawn, they look a little bit like Simon the Sorcerer characters, right? They would fit right in with uh, the style and aesthetic of Simon the Sorcerer. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cute. It's like a little Navi wow. looking for Link. Look at the size of those knockers. Indeed. What? Let us hope those inside are responsive to our inquiries. I I'm sorry. What? Answer our question. Did you just... Did you, did you just make a boob joke? <laughs> I think you just looking, did. looking at the handles of the double doors? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at the size of those knockers. They are literally for knocking on the door. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> knockers. <laughs> There we go. Oh, I'll knock hers. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me enumerate the ways. Okay. Let's take a look around. I cannot believe you came into the screen and the first thing you said, look at the size of these knockers. You're killing me here, man. Yeah, <laughs> this is killing me. This sort of thing is perfect for a game for 8 to 12 years old, am I right? <laughs> ferret art. What can I say? Ah, ferrets. What, what can I say? It's not bad. Or one of us. The knockers are so large. Don't try it until you knock it. By the way, have you noticed how large those knockers are? I cannot get over the fact that those knockers are huge. 
Boris hate knockers. Prefer booties. <laughs> <laughs>